Alrighty, hello every folks, and welcome to another video on, uh, well, hopefully helping you out when it comes to, uh, uh, to late game, you know, kind of map clearing and dealing with a lot of situations, and everyone's got their one map. Everyone's got that one map that they just dread going back into, because they know it's probably going to be a bad time every time that they do. And personally, to me, when it comes to Reborn in particular, this is Map 71, uh, Palace of the Dead. Reason being that uh, if you're somebody that loves using, using auto skills, this thing is going to be the bane of your existence, because you've got chickens out the wazoo. And especially, I feel like anytime somebody's, uh, you know, come up with that argument of I always need to use summons and whatever else, has never gotten the cockatrice spawn <laughs> on this particular map. Because realistically, they're probably going to end up being petrified before they hit anything. Anyway, so here's kind of the breakdown of what we're looking at here. Obviously, look, everyone's going to have their own counters to, you know, whatever their situation is. But the whole purpose of this whole thing right here is to give an idea on how to set up just kind of a lot of uh, different situations, how to have backup plans on backup plans on backup plans, so that when you don't have stats, you can rely on everything else. Uh, this is typically why I, uh, why I've been recommending a whole lot of things like coming in and uh, trying not to always, uh, you know, rely on your statistical advantages, uh, because frankly, a lot of your other stuff can be relied upon a lot more often than just simply always expecting to be stronger than the other guy. So anyways, what we've done already is we've uh, put our uh, uh, fire dragon up to the front there. He's going to be going and basically getting rid of these guys' stat advantages with his face. Uh, we've got our uh, ninja over there poisoning some, uh, uh, going and dropping some poisons on some uh, zombies. She's going to be heading in that direction in a moment, uh, but for the time being, she's currently just setting up. And additionally, speaking of setup, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up our uh, our lich over here. Realistically, we don't need to set him up just yet. Uh, but either way, uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of units that want to use a lot of auto skills on this team. And so we'll be uh, using those as we uh, as we move forward here. So we're at the point of POTD. Uh, we are constantly under leveled, and usually it's uh, it's at that point where it's seen as levels are the real advantage here. When in reality, it actually comes down to a lot of different things. For one thing, a lot of your standard units are going to be uh, like over here, running relics at this point or running better armor. So they get a gear upgrade partway through POTD, uh, where they're no longer running basic trash. These are the elites. Uh, and that being said, they are literally all just gear. <laughs> like a lot of these guys are basically just SNES variants because all they have is weapon skill and their equipment. Okay, these guys are going to hit hard, but hitting hard is practically all they do. Then we got over here uh, where we've got a lot of units that are the actual threat. Big health bars, big amount, big numbers. In general, these are something that you don't ever want to be fighting directly, but we're going to simply overcome a lot of their advantages with, well, stuff of our own. So we'll get to that as we'll get to it. Anyway, for the time being, we want to make sure that they are not uh, going and, you know, insecrating anybody. If, uh, if those guys pick up a crit card, they can easily uh, uh, be dropping uh, hits in the 700s, uh, versus many units. Obviously, every different uh, defensive situation will be a little different, uh, but they are going to have very, very effective uh, setup in a lot of cases. By the way, if you're wondering why I oftentimes will recommend missile abilities, it's always for stuff like this. Missiles are a lot better for uh, uh, for uh, for knockback, and they're a lot better for uh, certain situations where you want to, uh, to kind of attack on the way. They're cheap, they're quick to use. It doesn't mean that you're directly using them in the same ranges in the same situations all the time. They're just used for entirely different purposes. Uh, oftentimes, there's this kind of overemphasis on trying to uh, trying to directly compare everything as if they all do the same things. Every single thing that you can put on there is going to be d uh, serving a different role. Like right here, this balder bow is for the pur purpose of rolling a silence. Uh, we didn't end up rolling the silence in this particular instance, but either way, it would have been uh, effective for uh, uh, for hopefully disabling him a couple of turns from now. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. Still, again, it is a cheap option that we can throw out when we need to. Um, and for the time being, we can go ahead and move over here. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, drop our uh, uh, drop our uh, flame breath right here. And we're actually probably going to see if he can maybe hit himself with it. Uh, maybe we'll just have to uh, settle for uh, for hitting. Yeah, you know, it's fine if he hits himself, whatever. Um, so he's going to go ahead and hit over there. He's going to use his dragon's eye to guarantee that weaken, and he's going to go ahead and drop that weaken on everybody in that pile. So now these guys, despite their uh, uh, their numbers advantages, are going to have 50% less uh, less offense, which means that damage-wise they are functionally insignificant. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and use our cleric to go uh, set up for a uh, spell strike over here, and we're going to attempt to use whatever's left uh, to go turn them against each other. Uh, we'll apply that in just a little bit here, uh, but we'll get to that when we get to it. All right, so he's got his engulf, um, but he doesn't really have much else that we want to use him for right now. So currently, I'm just going to have him go forward and take a swing at this guy with his knife. I'm um, just attempting to roll that poison. He rolls the parry instead. It happens. So 
or next uh, we're gonna go ahead and entirely ensure that these guys are not gonna be a problem for us uh, so we're gonna see uh, she didn't roll her uh, concentration so we don't have to worry about those uh, zero percents just yet uh, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, shield bash this guy off in that direction and she's gonna go forward and she's gonna attempt to uh, drop some moment of the deads on all of them Anyway, now that we've got our concentration rolling, uh, we can go ahead and, uh, let's see, we can probably go ahead and shut down this chicken before they end up doing anything too scary. Actually, it looks like it hasn't quite, uh, that time is not here yet. But, let's see what other tools we have available at our disposal. Let's go ahead and probably go over here, and we're going to attempt to weaken down this gremlin. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, use our free cast on the sword to go and uh, tap him down a little bit. Uh, set up for our lich to attempt to go for the recruit in just a moment. Uh, did she roll her conserve? No, she didn't. Uh, so we're instead going to go over here. We're going to block his movement. We're going to take a swing here. Uh, he's not exactly the lowest on health, but still this might give us at least, you know, a 10% chance here uh, to just go and turn this guy on our side. This uh, Valk over here is running Stinky Set, uh, which he probably should have by this point in POTD. And that stinky set would allow us to, uh, to have a bit of an easier uh, setup for, uh, you know, for mass zombie recruitment, as it were. Anyway, uh, so we're going to go ahead and go for, let's see, did he just roll his, uh, his repel beast? He sure did. Fantastic. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to go over here and go for that silence again. Uh, he's just going to do that on his way over dodge that rock and now he's going to move forward uh, he's going to be a nice uh, tempting target especially for that ice chicken fantastic we're going to spread some mp around the party and next up we're going to want to uh, uh living corpse is just kind of a backup plan by the way uh, if we uh, need it at some point uh but what we're going to want to do let's see what our poison odds are looking like not too great um but that's uh that's going to be a story for another day uh, for the time being though we're just going to go ahead and tap down this guy and see if we can get him on our side uh, because it would be very handy to have this gremlin on our team uh, they're great units, uh, especially, I believe this one's a familiar, so uh, that should give us some petrification options. Um, so there we go, we got him on our side, beautiful. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see about turning that against the other side in just a moment. Currently haven't rolled any skill cards, those would be very handy. Uh, there's some over there on the left, but they're kind of impractically far away for the time being. Um, there we go, they're gonna go ahead and bring some of their birds up forward. Perfect for petrification, I would think. Uh, they get that uh, silence going. Again, just going to waste their turn instead of attacking. I'll take it. Um, it was basically a free action for us, and it takes one of their items, takes some of their time. So that works out pretty nicely. All right, so we've got another Flame Breath uh, locked and ready to go. I'm thinking we probably go ahead and drop it on this uh, Griff over here because he's looking a little bit strong right now. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Hello, Mr. Griff. Goodbye to your damage. Uh, oh, he didn't roll his Dragon's Eye. I'm just being an idiot. Okay, whatever. Anyway, we'll just go ahead and attempt to just delete him instead. Uh, so, Agonal, 63%, uh, or 63% to just completely get uh, rid of him entirely. I think we'll just do that. Um, so, there we go. He's going to be petrified for a while, and we've got our uh, heal ready to go at the moment. We don't have anything better as of yet, uh, but let's see. They've got a turn coming up. This guy got rid of his silence. We have at least a 30%, uh, so we're actually going to get a little bit aggressive with this. Take our 30%. Uh, we're actually going to go just to the edge of our range. Uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to use this uh, to essentially build up time to do more stuff. See if this ends up rolling. We'll see if we get that charm. Didn't quite get it. Worth a setup. Um, you, a lot of times you'll get uh, Black Lizard Powder for free in POTD. Um, so it's honestly worth doing if you've got if you're just basically doing nothing with your cleric at that point anyway. It's kind of set him up for a uh, chance for a big turnaround there. Um, anyway, so we've got some MP cards floating around. We'll probably end up making some use of those. Uh, we'll go ahead and take use of the fact that this guy's currently weakened uh, to just uh, hit him with his dagger, roll for that poison, just go pick up that MP card because nobody else is really taking it right now. So why not? Um, it's a fairly uh, nice and uh, cheap and quick action for him to take. Anyway, I uh, rolled that concentration, which means rolled that stun, which means you're going to go ahead and uh, paralytic wave these two. I don't want them getting this MP card, so we're going to go ahead and take it for them. Uh, just kind of deny their cards, cause some more uh, cards to, uh, uh, to end up spawning. Uh, we went for a uh, hammer and shield on her for that chance of parry. Uh, anyway, so at this point, uh, we're just going to go ahead and probably help with the uh, setup over in this direction. Uh, let's go ahead and see, because she needs to get more MP going. Actually, she has her, her uh, poison rolling. What am I doing? Here, let's go ahead and poison this chicken. Just go ahead and have that problem sort itself out. So we're going to go ahead and poison Z chicken. There we go, and now he melts. You go ahead and melt away, sir. Uh, we've got our Empower on the Dragon. That won't really necessarily help us out too much. Uh, who's got a turn coming up? Other chickens got a turn coming up. This one has a chance to be put to sleep. So we'll go in this direction. We'll put the chicken to sleep, and we'll say hello, you know, go take your nap, all of that kind of business. 
Are you going to roll to sleep? He did not roll to sleep. That is a shame. Just so you know, when it comes to these roll chances, um, the uh, the chickens basically will have a... Um, or not the chickens, but basically when it comes to your hit moves, for the most part, while I'm sure there are exceptions, for the most part, they're going to be... Um, uh, they're going to just be a flat chance to happen. Um, so, you know, your, uh, your weapon attacks, your petrifications, all that kind of thing, a lot of times will feel like it's a bit of a difference, and I think there might be a mind difference in the case of the cockatrice, um, but in the case of, um, of, like, uh, your weapon attacks and things like that, it sometimes feels like it's damage doing it, it's not. Anyway, so, we've got this, uh, dragon over here, uh, this, uh, this gremlin's currently rocking out, uh, we don't want him doing anything too serious, we're just gonna go ahead and, uh, drop our empowered flame breath on him. Um, again, just kind of to show that it's it's nothing to do with uh, them just being weak as they are. Like now that he, he's in his normal state, he got his uh, he got his empower on and everything else. You know, he's going to be hitting pretty reasonably hard. Honestly, these uh, it, it really does not take much to push these guys into nutso status. Um, let's see, we're going to have some moving pretty soonish here. I'm thinking I'm thinking you're probably going to be the more important of these two to uh, get up and running right now. Um, Move you over here. Hopefully this doesn't draw too much aggro. Might get him knocked unconscious, but we'll deal with that situation as it comes. Either way, uh, now we only have one unit dedicated off to the left side. Uh, the reason that this is important is we are not dedicating everybody else in that direction, and hopefully both archers are going to be targeting that soldier. Uh, Wizard will be targeting that soldier. Our Valkyrie, meanwhile, goes and keeps attempting to recruit the rest of them onto their team. Uh, this is why recruit is a massively important a, a kind of offensive tool, more so than just something to get units on your team. It matters. Um, it's pretty darn frickety handy. Um, anyway. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reposition you, and I probably should keep more recovery items on her, to be honest. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and use this for setup. So overripe fruit uh, on a underlevel Terranite, pretty useful thing. Doesn't affect her very much, because she only takes 145 damage, but she's going to be healing everybody around her to a kind of, well, excessive degree in this particular case. Um, okay, we're going to probably go over in this direction, just out of rock range. Um, actually, we'll probably go about diagonal. Let's go ahead and go here, actually. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go for the blowgun. Uh, he shouldn't be able to counter fire from right... Oh, wait, right, he can counter fire. Whatever. It's fine! Uh, so he's poisoned. Uh, they're both poisoned. They're going to be melting away 400s at this point. Uh, we'll go ahead and use our... Uh, uh, probably just use our E's in this case uh, to get our Lich back up on his feet. We still have not rolled any of those skill cards that it would be nice for him to have. So we're just going to go ahead and have him take his uh, fast turns over here. There we go, Lich gets targeted, but that thing is weakened. Uh, and if we get them frightened, all the better. So, uh, let's see. Uh, he doesn't have any MP at the moment, but he can go and uh, shank this other Gremlin. They're just going to have a knife fight over here, why not? Uh, you do that. You are getting Repel Beast. Okay, so cool thing on this. Uh, now that he's in a position that uh, he's got his lobber, he's got his uh, physical up card, this means that he can go and boost the power of his bombs, uh, which means that he can go and drop some pretty meaty hits with these things. So he's going to go ahead and drop a 400 on this gremlin here. Um, go ahead and uh, put him within uh, kill range. Uh, this should mean that you should be able to nom him pretty good. Uh, 166, and eh, he's still gonna hit pretty hard because he's got an anti-dragon weapon. Um, okay, whatever, fine. So, next order of business, uh, you go and try to recruit this one. I probably should have silenced the, uh, the wizard, but whatever, we'll deal with that as it comes. What is this, like 5%? No percent? Good. Fantastic, just what I wanted to see. So, they're gonna howl, they're gonna miss the stun. Funnily enough, Repel Beast even causes their autos to miss, which is just kinda hilarious. Um, now, we go for our... Mm, do we want to go for the major heal? Maybe, because if we go right here, that actually should just barely miss everybody. Uh, does she Does she currently have her other stuff going? Not really, but this would actually allow for a weaken. We already have the weaken from the dragon. Not really worthwhile. Okay, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and go for the heal here then. So, she's going to go for that. Uh, probably would be... I mean, I don't think there was anything uh, too much to worry about with that uh, griffin getting healed up, because realistically we're going to poison them again, and it'll make up for any healing done within half a second. Alright, so, Zombie Warrior still putting in work uh, for absolutely tanking hits, and as you can see, it's not just a level difference. He is struggling just as much against that uh, basic soldier as you would. Uh, they all are, so... Just uh, kind of something to bear in mind. He gets his conserve RT, but it's not going to be the whole story, and I want these guys to be re-frightened. So I'm going to go ahead and use my backup plan. Use the Hollowing Stone to get this guy back up, or get this girl back up on her feet. Hopefully uh, she ends up uh, frightening these two once again. Did not end up happening. Bit of a bummer, but oh well. 
Uh, let's go ahead and probably uh, shield bash. Can we put you into the poison tiles? Yes. Uh, you don't have a turn coming up anytime soon, so that should uh, let him take a little bit of damage. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we get salvation rolling. That'll get our dragon nice and charged up again. We have a skill card over here. Would be very handy for denim if we can make that happen. Um, Additionally, if we were to, let's say, charge up our gremlin, that probably would be pretty handy here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Lich and we're going to use Sestina here uh, to sit right next to each other and hopefully uh, draw a little bit of aggression. Unfortunately, they decided to go for a basic attack instead. I was hoping they might uh, drop an AoE there. Uh, it appears they're going to be doing that in a different direction and hit their own guys. All right, cool. Um, they probably saw that as pretty decent math and technically on paper it is, but... Next order of business uh, is going to be you over here. Uh, if we can go ahead and, just in case he ends up getting unscared, uh, if we just go ahead and uh, petrify you for the moment, that might help out a decent bit, so we'll just petrify you right there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get these guys disabled and or killed, so there we go. Go ahead and uh, get this problem sorted out. Uh, we got one of them on poison tiles, one of them dead. Uh, next up, we want to make sure that this uh, chicken has a chance to miss, so we're going to go ahead and attempt to throw a book at him. Didn't quite happen in that case. Uh, oh well. Uh, next up, we want to use one of our backup plan pumpkins right here, because I'm a little bit worried at, uh, at her MP regeneration situation right now, so we're just going to have her eat that pumpkin and wait. Um, next up, we are going to work on you. Uh, in fact, I think we're just going to go use the sword for this. Just use the old talking stick, as it were. Bonk, and uh, attempt to go for the recruit. Uh, she's got her in still, so it's going to do a little bit extra. 4%, it's practically nothing, but you know what? She's going to be able to tank their hits for a round. It's fine. Um, all right, Chicken's going to move in. Going to do a little bit of a attacky thing. His uh, weaken is currently not applied. We'll have to reapply that at some point. Do we get the petrification? Yes, he does get the petrification here. Um, as long as the cleric is up and running, uh, we can go ahead and revive chain our way up here. I forget if I explained the revive chain as of yet, but the general idea is fairly simple. Uh, right now, actually, first order of business is we're probably going to go ahead and just start applying some numbers in this direction. If he can... Actually, he should probably save it for uh, for the next Fizz card. What we're going to do is that chicken's going to have his action pretty soon. We're going to attempt to make him miss. We're going to false strike him with that. Uh, next up, we've got our uh, dragon that's going to be coming up. Uh, he's going to go ahead and drop a breath move on these two, uh, attempting to weaken them. Hopefully, this will mean that that petrification, even if it petrifies, will be going somewhere in, you know, kind of in that rightward direction, as it were, somewhere in the center there. Um, next up, we're going to be using our cleric to attempt to... Uh, uh, to uh, go uh, revive one unit, to then revive another unit, to then revive another unit. On um, this particular case, I believe Sestina does have a revive on her still, so what we're going to do, and usually you just use uh, regular Blessing Stones for this, um, and in this particular case, I forgot to buy Blessing Stones, so I just kind of used whatever the hell dropped, which in this case was Hallowing Stones. Eh, it's a little bit less efficient, but screw it. So, she's got her Steel Stance rolling, um, and she's going to go ahead and uh, get this uh, Lich back up on his feet. Uh, Lich will then, like, in any other situation, I would say probably go and uh, attempt to uh, take down the ice chicken right now. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, we're just going to go ahead and use him to do that job instead. Actually, kind of think of it. Can we living? Oh, dude, we can get a zombie. Oh, yeah, definitely do that. <laughs> I wasn't even expecting that. That works out great. Uh, I want that, uh, uh, that zombie gremlin. All right, so zombie gremlin now gets back up on his feet. Just, like, as just absolute... Oh, man, and he comes back with 35 too. Oh, that's just cruel. Okay. Uh, hi, buddy. Guess what? <laughs> oh, man, and you thought he was a problem before. Okay, so is he going to roll the stun? No, he's just going to do his uh, 100 damage petrification. Okay, cool, whatever. So uh, hopefully we get our uh, archer over there on the left. Uh, we're going to get that warrior back up on his feet, uh, hopefully disable all those units on the left pretty soonish here. Uh, hopefully Denim will be rejoining us in the land of doing something useful pretty soonish. Um, and let's see, next unit that's going to be attacking is going to be one of these uh, chickens right here. So I'm thinking we just roll for a chance to disable him here. Because uh, if we can get him out of commission, I would like Denim to be able to go pick up his uh, revive, or not revive, but his uh, skill card. Uh, didn't end up uh, rolling in in that particular case. Uh, they're going to go after her. Fantastic. She's just going to go ahead and tank that. Um, and uh, next up, let's see here. Let's see, she's at 45. She can make this work. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, salamander her. Okay, then. Very unlucky roll in our case. Uh, anyway, uh, go ahead and roll for the 8% recruit, I suppose. Those odds would have gone up pretty significantly with every one of those additional hits, but thank you very kindly for uh, rolling only one. 
But again, that is the purpose of this whole thing. And he's going to spell charge that chicken. That is rather rude of him, really. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is going to go ahead and punch her. Uh, she's, she's also going to go over here and pick up this crit card because he's also going to punch this wizard pretty soon. Um, all right, next order of business. We go over here. We start recruiting some dudes uh, and getting them back on their feet. Uh, you go here. You go get a resurrection going on this one. Hopefully frighten the Cyclops, uh, who will then hopefully be a bit ineffective. Um, anyway, go ahead and pick up the skill card on you because you appear to not feel very spooky today. Uh, next up, we'll be using a Drain Mind. Will that necessarily help you out too much here? Maybe not. I'm thinking, let's see... Yeah, I think we just leave her where she is so that she ends up uh, hopefully getting attacked. She does the stuns and all of that. Um, all right, crag fall. That's survivable. Uh, chickens are probably going to be moving pretty soon. Like, basically the speed and aggression of these chickens is what makes them so dang scary. And this is why if you end up stat boosting your griffins and cockatrices, they too will become an absolute horror show. Um, anyway, so flame breath. Who's attacking next? Uh, do you have your dragon's eye rolling? Uh, doesn't look like it. But if we go over here, we can pick up a crit. And this really won't improve our odds of doing anything too crazy with it. He's currently still weakened anyway, but whatever. We got the points. We got the damage. Let's go ahead and make that happen. Uh, they're going to go after the TK. This actually works out pretty nicely. And he stumbles. He would have had a chance to miss anyway, but whatever. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get our resurrection going. Go get our lich going. Go get that uh, chicken and or the other chicken all deadified. Uh, you do that. Uh, you got your matchup, don't you? You're... Let's see here. Uh, if we go ahead and use our hellhound here, this realistically... 243. Hmm... Mm, it's got a shot one way or another. Uh, I feel like this chicken's way more likely. Uh, however, this one also is currently within targeting range of that wizard if all things end up going great. Realistically, this is the safer bet. Uh, we're just going to go after this one. Um, so we're just going to go after this. If he rolls four, he did not roll four. Real shame, to be honest. Uh, but let's go ahead and go over this way. Um, so... Uh, they will go that way, they will fire on the dude, and they will just keep on firing on the dude because he is the only dude that they see. They don't attack the Valk because she's running Stinky Set, and it is amazing. Alright, um, next up. This is kind of why I was hoping to save that, uh, that thingy earlier, because, you know, then I could just go for something like this, uh, where if he had, if either he got a Fizz Up card, or if he managed to, uh, do something a bit different, uh, he might be able to, uh, to kind of finish that guy off. Anyway, uh, both of these guys are gonna be taking turns pretty soon. Uh, this one's stunned. This one is not stunned, so go ahead and roll for the stun. Uh, just go basically take a free, uh, stun swing here. Uh, next, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and just whack and talk, I guess. Uh, the old beaten talking stick. Just the old baton, as it were. But yeah, I love this combination, because you can just basically sneak somebody in here. Knights work great for this, too. Uh, but you just kind of sneak them into a crowd of zombies, and it's like, please, 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 okay. <laughs> it's just nice. It's just great to be obnoxious sometimes, you know? Anyway, so, this is going to be one of those cases where you actually do want to have those uh, those summons appearing, and uh, that's going to be for the sake of deleting this chicken, because I don't want him doing more chicken stuff. So, summons matter when they can kill, otherwise they are, you know, just damage that's awkward to apply. So, there we go. Chicken, gone. One big source of damage is bye-bye. Next up, uh, she rolls her concentration. Hi, thank you for finally entering the party, but we've got a chance for sleep here. Um, we've also got a chance for sleep on this one. I'm just going to go ahead and go for sleep because there's a chance to just shake them out of their turn entirely. 30%, it is what it is. Go for it. If it lands, it lands. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, they're going to go for the uh, Wind Blast that uh, actually ends up being beneficial for us. Everybody else could simply tank it uh, in the case of the Heat. Well, actually, the TK, I guess everybody moved out of the range of the TK, so it's not going to be super useful for us. Um, either way, start beating down this Wizard. Um, if we don't get the Wizard, whatever, but it would be very handy to have on our side. Uh, did he roll his Dragon's Eye? I don't think so. Whatever. It's still a chance to apply Poison, so just, or not Poison, but Weaken. Um, it would have been very nice, but unfortunately it didn't quite happen, so oh well. Um, anyway, we want to get more Poison on there, so let's go ahead and throw our Resurrection on here and uh, get you all up on your feet. Uh, currently the uh, Cleric has other units to take the aggro for her. I might have set her up for a bit of an unfortunate situation here, but... We'll deal with that in time. Anyway, I want to... Let's see. She doesn't have her Shadow Bind set up uh, rolled as of yet, but she does ever have her guaranteed poison. So we're going to go ahead and poison this guy. Uh, one attack from the Lich, one poison should see that job all well and done. Additionally, she's going to go ahead and take over this crit card over here uh, just to assist in her future endeavors. 
That guy will continue firing. I want his Crescent, and I want her Rude Bow. Uh, those are currently non-negotiable. Anyway, she's going to get petrified. She's going to get landed. What on earth was that? Oh, that's what that was. Okay, never mind. Okay, so, chicken's over there. Nothing too special going on over here. You, I guess, just go attempt to shut off the wizard. We're off to see the wizard and hopefully break his throat. Pew. And didn't decide to shut him off. Fine. I guess he's just going to keep on talking then. What a shame. I can't relate to that whatsoever. Anyway, so they're going to shut that guy down, and we will then attempt to get some units back up on their feet. Because they were down, and guess what? Now they immediately won't be, because one skill card is enough to get this guy becoming an absolute terrifying monster beast. Um, and I want to have more, uh, hopefully, poison going on in the uh, direction of that Cyclops and that Hippogriff. Alright, you get your Benum, you get your whatever. Cool thing, though, uh, and part of the reason that I love using this setup as opposed to any other revival setup. She comes back with 60 MP, which means that you get a poison move, which means that uh, 60 uh, MP off this thing means that she can go and drop a poison finisher on something. It is very handy. A lot of the cheap moves are very, very handy. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and guarantee that this chicken is now pretty much dead within two ticks. So we move you over in that direction. They're going to go ahead and do their stunny type of shenaniganry. Um, I forget if these guys drop any items. I'm sure the zombies do, but realistically, the items that I'm getting from these guys from just recruiting is going to be more useful anyway. Um, 20%, uh, about as good as the odds are really going to be. So just go ahead and uh, whack her with a stick, a bunk. Uh, probably risked a crit there because she has, she has the crit up. But the nice thing about recruiting zombies is you can just wait for them to come back on their feet. Anyway, so she's on her feet, uh, or she's uh, on her team here, so we'll just go ahead and uh, carry on with that whole situation. Uh, next up, why don't you go ahead and bite this one? No particularly useful reason to do so, uh, other than you can. So we do what we can because we must, as they say. So, uh, Wizard is now all set for recruitment. If we so choose, we now go for the universal make Cyclops go away button and petrified, silenced, stunned, what have you. Any one of those options will gladly delete that guy and all of his usefulness. Um, anyway, Chicken took out the Lich before he went down, but we're still perfectly fine. Anyway, uh, there goes our uh, Crescent Zombie. Perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and get you back up on your feet. No, uh, no time to be taking naps around here, you know? No time to be resting. You can get up on your feet. Uh, what are you? Are you an auto skill card? Don't really need you. Uh, is there anything we can live in corpse? Probably not. Uh, poison odds? Uh, whatever, he's already poisoned. Just go ahead and start uh, applying the hammer, I suppose. There we go. Because yeah, the, the thing is, it's going to take multiple rounds to finish them. Yay. I got the shiny golden shield. It's not necessarily going to help out too many units on this team, but whatever, I'll take it. Um, let's see, probably speed up our Cleric to speed up our uh, Revivals and stuff like that. Uh, get you over, actually you go uh, pick up your skill card to guarantee our infinite Revivals. Alright. Anyway, they're gonna Vulcan Lance on him, he's gonna get knocked out again. It is still funny that Liches are undead, but also not undead. Oh well. Um, probably apply a Weaken on this guy too, just so he doesn't get any bright ideas. Uh, I didn't get that Dragon's Eye because I forgot to pick up a crit card on him. Or, I uh, pick up a uh, skill card, rather. Ooh, well. Um, actually, we don't have anything that we need to worry about getting killed off, so we can probably just go for this. Just go for the Flaming Blast. In fact, why even go for that? We can just go for the Stop, I suppose. Realistically, the odds are probably better for the Charm, but we might as well roll for the Stop because Stop and Poison is just a funny combination. Uh, they're going to go that way, do that kind of thing. Man, that'd be threatening if it was. Um, Alright, so, you go ahead and start chatting up this dude guy over here. Um, you know, he'll beat stick. Beat, 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 beat. You just wait. Um, let's see, let's get you up. It's crazy what uh, one or two skill cards can do. You know, don't you just hate those moments where you just don't have MP for anything, like reviving every single round? Dude, that's crazy. It's wild how you 100% totally run into that situation all the time, man. Anyway. Uh, so let's continue facing in this direction. Uh, you probably just stab this guy because you can. Uh, do we have any reason to pick up those? We're just going to pick up the bag because we can. Why not? Get our shiny rocks. Uh, that guy is still petrified and probably will be for the foreseeable future. 
Um, that wizard guy, though. Let's double check him real quick. I, I think I'm probably just gonna vaporize the wizard just to see if he drops anything cool, but... Your deal, what is it? Because you've got Paradigm Shift, and that's that's free money, you know? I like Paradigm Shift. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll probably just vaporize him, whatever. Um, let's get Sherry back up on her feet, uh, see about spookifying the statue. The statues can be scared, believe it or not. Concentration... didn't roll the other thingy. Oh well. Um, just hit him. Not like she has really... she really doesn't have anything to train or whatever. She's just kind of hitting him just to uh, be spiteful, I suppose. Um, you go this way and assist in this project. And you get the general idea, I hope. So if you ever were in those situations where you're like, how do I... How do I get out of these, you know, seemingly unwinnable scenarios? How do I get back, uh, back up on my feet when it seems like everything is completely donezo? The answer is just constant backup plans on your backup plans. If you have enough backup plans to everything, you just always have an answer to every situation. You just Batman this shit, you know? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what I should title this, this, uh, uh, this video here. It's like the, uh, the rookie's guide to Batmaning this shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, Lich is coming up pretty soonish. Uh, let's see. This guy's Earth. What do we want to do here? I'm kind of thinking... I'm probably just sword this guy. I don't know. Whatever. You, you go this direction, I guess. See if you can maybe missile something. Maybe just go ahead and shadow bind this guy just to be spiteful. There we go. You had a turn that you're never going to actually get access to, but now you also still don't have a turn you're going to have access to. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Empower Dragon. We actually saved that bomb. Didn't end up needing it. Uh, again, just silence this guy just to be spiteful, or at least attempt to. He's going to parry. Go this way, get our Terranite back up on our feet, uh, get you over in this direction. Do you want to just snipe this guy just for fun? Just do it. Apparently not. He's, he stumbled. He was a little bit too, uh, too scared of the repercussions that could come out of all this whole thing. Anyway, um, did we get our thingy? We sure did. Let's go ahead and get Sherry back up on her feet. I don't know whether to make this a showcase of, like, backup plans or just the fact that this Lord build is pretty kick-ass. Um... Who needs damage, you know? Anyway, there's our Lich. And, uh, yeah, then we just explore the wonders of Starfall, and we're like, hey, guess what? Frickin' Jesus or whatever. And then they go boom, and then the space explodes in their face. And I wish he would drop Paradigm Shift, but it's probably gonna be something useful instead. Uh, Salamander? Salamander. Uh, hopefully if you crit, like, two of those, that'll be perfect. Not quite. Oh well. So next order of business, we basically just trap this guy in place and then just keep recruiting him because I want that percent bow because I'm going to have a uh, shop coming up pretty soonish and that basically means that I can transfer that into having a uh, uh, having a charm bow, which means I can go set an AI like charm archer and probably just make them level 10 or some nonsense <laughs> and then just repeatedly let them get back up on their feet. Um, it's like repeatedly spam revive this uh, this random archer. That seems like fun. Uh, anyway, I'm not even going to risk the uh, Im ridiculously improbable crit here. Uh, let's see. Resurrect you yet again. Perfect. Alright. I uh, probably want poison on this guy. I totally forgot he was even a thing, to be honest. Uh, let's go ahead and poisonify you. Does she have her in Venom? I don't know, but we're going to go about it that way anyway. Uh, next we get our Engulf, and next we get our Phalanx, next we get our Conserve, next we get our other Conserve. It is good times. It is very, very good times. Alright. Go ahead and uh, BOSU. This is, by the way, the uh, the same Valkyrie that Nebeth started with. They've been around this whole time. <laughs> they survived the speedrun, they survived everything else. Uh, so many casualties, and they were not among them. Uh, let's see, can we paralysis you? Uh, sleep wasn't kind of a chance to hit there because they're currently running a fever. I'm just going to go ahead and probably shank with you. I don't really care that they get knocked unconscious because it's not like this guy carries Vanish. Uh, repel Beast. Let's go ahead and collect some cards just kind of because. Uh, actually, you know what? Probably fire first. Attempt to go for the silence just to annoy this guy. And then we'll go ahead and pick up a Fizz card and uh, see if we can pick up four of them. See if we can get that like 800 damage bomb on him. Uh, see if we can weaken him just for good measure. There we go. Perfect. So now he can't move anywhere either. And he's just melting away, as you do. 
Please join us, sir. Let's see. You actually go over here and... Are you lawful? Darn. I was going to say, if he was lawful, that would have been no crit. Or uh, no, uh, no counter. Um, we're going to just... There we go. We got our crescent, and now we can just delete this guy and get on with it. This is why I say that uh, the recruit is an absolutely amazing offense tool, you know? The fact that we've uh, basically gone over a, uh, a situation that would be outright hell in a situation even with uh, stat boosted units and a bunch of uniques and trying to overpower anything but as you can see it is perfectly manageable by simply looking about it in a little bit of a different direction you know all right anyway um i should probably wait a minute i do have my keyboard plugged in i was gonna say i should probably go to my keyboard and plug this thing in but uh, we're not uh we're not recording remotely today so no need to worry about that Get all of our autos rolling, you go over here, you go ahead and resurrect this one. And we just wait for this guy to melt, and or drop uh, summons on him or whatever else. You know, just kind of do what you will. Alright, the numb. Do we get the steel stance? We got the envenom. We can re uh, just re-envenom with this, I suppose. There we go. Just kind of for fun, I guess. And we get our dragon in on the action, because pincers are still fun, dang it. Uh, what, do you want to just participate just kind of because, I guess? There we go. You, you participate. You, you do a little bit. It's not going to be very much. Because, you know, in her case, that would be a stats, uh, actually useful stats check. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and drop that. Going to get the critical, going to get the uh, re-weaken. You do nothing. You just be spiteful. Uh, you do nothing. Let's see, do we just use the meditate for offense at this point? I think we do. Let's see, 85, we can drop a this. Uh, we can also re-up that weekend just, again, for no apparent reason. I'm thinking instead, how we go over here, how we apply one of these, we use the Tyrant's Mace, just because it kind of looks cool, we attempt to go for that crit. Um, you can actually get some pretty solid numbers off clerics uh, using something like that. Anyway, go ahead and finish him off here. And there we go. That is 71, all done, dusted, and with plenty of new friends. So, whatever that was a lesson in, there we go. <laughs> Admittedly, I probably kind of completely lost the... Uh, uh, lost the trail there as far as what I was trying to say to begin with, but either way, that build for Lord is pretty handy. You can deal with a lot of situations that seem like you have to rely on stats or numbers or what have you in far easier ways, and yada yada. Uh, let's just go ahead and rename this guy Hunter Micro. I like I like that name, the first one. There we go. Because it looks just like one of the uh, uh, hunters from uh, Resident Evil 1. Uh, you... Am I really... Hmm... There's really only one name that that face implies. This is Skepti the Skeptical Archer. We'll probably use him for something. Actually, he's perfect. He's perfect as a zombie archer. Because he can just keep getting... He can just keep re-charming. And honestly, she gets to keep that name. <laughs> this is the weird gender-bent version of uh, King Tristan that just sort of showed up here and got confused um, after he uh, died and got resurrected in the episode 8 that never happened. Um, and rename to... Okie dokie. Anyway, so y'all have yourselves a good one. Take care. And that is how do thing with many recruit have. <laughs> uh, ooh, lots of good moves. But yeah, coquettish. Oh, dude, coquettish is so freaking busted. Anyway, okay, y'all have yourselves a good one. Take care.